Hi, welcome to ECNM Ask. This is a series of short videos presented to you by ECNM Magazine. And what we're gonna do is we're just gonna take a very few minutes and we're gonna answer some questions that, that uh, you have about electrical installations and maintenance and so forth. So today we're gonna be talking about grounding and bonding. My name's Randy Barnett, and I'm one of the subject matter experts uh, here at ECNM Magazine, as well as I'm the program manager for electrical codes and safety at NTT Training. So anyway, let's get started on grounding and bonding because that's our question topics for today, right? So let's see what uh, have we got. Question wise, someone has asked, can the main grounding electrode conductor be spliced? And everybody says right away, no, you can't do that, okay? Because actually 250.64, we'll take a look at a couple of things here, but 250.64 says it must be continuous in length. All right, so I can't splice it. However, you better read that section because it also references us uh, to some other sections that says, you know what? Well, think about it without even reading it. Just think about it. If I need to, uh, um, let's say a bond to a water pipe. So I, well, I need to, my, I'm gonna use my water pipe is my grounding electrode because it meets the requirements of article 250 for being part of my grounding electrode system. So I need to connect to that. I'm not gonna go out in the yard with my grounding electrode conductor and dig down to my water pipe and try and connect to it. I'm gonna to connect to it probably in my house somewhere, right? Or in my building. And uh, so what have I done? I have now terminated that grounding electrode conductor, connected it to a piece of water pipe that's gonna extend out to my grounding electrode system. So I am allowed to do that, okay? So hopefully that answers that question for you then. Let's see, and that, that uh, other reference is 250.68C. So 250.68C talks about terminating that grounding electrode conductor. <clears throat> oh, this is a good one. This is a question that seems to confuse people a lot of times. Can you please go over three pole versus four pole ATS switch grounding? First of all, let's go back to article 100 real quick and look at the definition for a separately derived system. So back into the 2020 code, separately derived system. Got to know my ABCs, there it is. An electrical source other than a service having no direct connection to circuit conductors of any other electrical source other than those established by grounding and bonding connection. So we bond enclosures together and so forth. So a separately derived system, maybe a good example then is a transformer. Uh, excuse me, let's say a generator would probably be a better example. So I have my service comes in, and of course it brings in the ungrounded phase conductors, goes to an automatic transfer switch, and then goes out to my loads. In the event that I lose the service, I have my emergency generator, standby generator that kicks in, and, and the switch throws over from the utility over to the generator, and now my generator supplies my loads. That's great. The question is on grounding that generator is, do I switch that neutral? You see, I can have, I have two options. I can bring in that neutral from the utility and take it and just keep it continuous right through my automatic transfer switch on down to the loads. Or I can use that transfer switch to break the neutral. If I break the neutral, I would lose my neutral connection down below. So what do I have to do? I have to establish a new neutral over here at my generator. So that's called a separately derived system. The easy way to find that out, take a look in your automatic transfer switch. If it's a three pole switch, it switches the three phase conductors, A, B, and C. If it's a two pole, or if, excuse me, if it's a four pole switch, it'll also switch that neutral conductor, in which case, yes, you would have a separately derived system. You would need to ground that generator then. See if we can get in another question. Uh, well, this re relates to generators. Uh, how do you recommend grounding a diesel engine driven backup generator? Just as well, same recommendation question for a natural gas generator. Well, that ties into what we were just talking about. Uh, the prime mover, the source of, of energy for the prime mover, be it gasoline, diesel, uh, natural gas, whatever it is, uh, it doesn't matter. The electrical end of it doesn't care how it's turning, right? It just, it's electrical. And so the answer would be, how would I ground that? Well, I would have to go into my code book and 
And, uh, you know, once again, if it's a separately derived system, that's going to be that we were just talking about. That's in 250.30 for grounding of separately derived systems in. But I think we just explained that pretty well in the previous uh, question. Uh, one more quick question. And uh, can you talk a little bit about the auxiliary electrode? Yeah, auxiliary electrodes, 250.54. Let's take a look at that uh, real quick. Very short section, not a lot of information on it. 250.54, auxiliary grounding electrodes. It says one or more grounding electrodes shall be permitted to be connected to the equipment grounding conductors in 250.118, which is bonding. We already talked about uh, in uh, previous Q&A what those uh, uh, bonding methods we can use, such as rigid conduit wire types and so forth. And um, it says it shall not be required, the auxiliary electrode is not required to be, to meet the requirements of the grounding electrode system then. So what are we talking about? We ground at the service of the source of the separately derived system, basically. That's actually where we're going and we connect to the windings on the transformer, the generator, and we actually take them to the earth and ground. With an auxiliary grounding electrode, we have a piece of equipment out here operating and the manufacturer says, you know what, probably to get rid of some stray voltages or something like that. We want you to go in and we want you to connect to that enclosure or to the equipment grounding conductor in that enclosure. And we want you to ground right there at that piece of equipment. That's the auxiliary grounding uh, rod. And so the auxiliary grounding electrode is not connected to the grounding electrode system. It's not part of the grounding electrode system. Anyway, that's all the time we got for today. This is uh, uh, once again, ECNM Ask. You got questions, we try and get them answered for you here as one of the SMEs at ECNM Magazine, which is part of the Endeavor Business Portfolio of Publications. And uh, be safe, we'll see you next time.